Isabel. I'm a third year computer engineering student, and this summer I was working on uh, an efficient way to write an algorithm for a uh, photon microscopy, which is able to reconstruct an image. And uh, so, before we talk about efficiency, I wanted to tell you guys what a two photon microscope, microscope is. A two photon microscope is, uh, or the best way to describe it would be to uh, tell you guys how it works. And uh, to, uh, so when you use a two photon microscope, you first excite the area that you're interested in, right? And then once you excite that area with a fluorescent marker, you ex uh, or you mark it with, <laughs> I'm sorry, you mark it with uh, the fluorescent uh, marker that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, it's okay. You mark the area with a fluorescent probe so that you can excite that area. Once you excite it, the image on the right explains what happens during the excitation. It's called the Jablonski diagram, and it, show, uh, it shows that, uh, for example, using the blue photon, when you excite the electron uh, with a blue photon, which is uh, a higher uh, photon or high energy photon, it goes to the excited state. Once it's in the excited state, it, take, it takes a little bit of uh, time to cool down and it goes back to the ground state. Once in the, it's in the ground state, it it hasn't lost all its energy, so it releases some uh, some photons. And in, in our case, it releases a green. Do you guess agree? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. It's not green. Uh, it releases a green photon, and our light sensor from the two photon microscopy picks up this green, uh, this green light, and that's what that's what it's, it's recording. It's recording the intensity of the green light, and this uh, the same thing happens with the two photon and the single photon. It's the same thing except uh, the single photon uses a higher energy uh, single uh, blue photon, and then for this uh, two photon uses two two uh, lower level uh, photons. Now. Uh, I already mentioned that the light sensor picks up the, the intensity of the, this photon being released, right? And I'll talk more about the intensity levels in a later slide. But uh, you might ask, why, why, single, why use a two photon instead of a single photon? Well, a two photon has a tighter excitation area, which produces a better picture for our microscope. That's why it's better. For example, if you see on the, on the, on the image on the left, it has, uh, this is a zoom in picture of what is being picked up by the light. This is the light sensor that's picking up the, uh, what is being reflected from the electron that's come back down to the ground state. Uh, you can see that the excitation pattern is like a double cone. It's, it's not focused at a particular point. So you're picking up more than you have to, which means your picture that you're going to produce is not going to be focused at that point. So you're not going to be able to see it clearly. And uh, if you, but if you look to the right, this part, the, that's the two photon that, with the red light. It, it picks up, if you see this zoomed in picture, it picks up one point. So it's, it, it excites a single point and it picks up the intensity of the, <coughs> excuse me, it picks up the intensity, the intensity level at that point. And you keep changing the excitation area to pick up at each point, so which means that you have a much better picture compared to any other uh, microscope. And that is seen on the on the right side. If you see the white focus, the focal, and the two photon at each depth, you can see that the quality of the picture is much better for a two photon. And that's why uh, the two photon microscopy is better. But this has already been built, and why do we care about it? Well, my lab wants to build a wire, two, uh, wireless two photon microscope. And why? Well, the current microscope, the two photon microscope that exists, is it's, the setup looks like this, which means the animals that are being, or whatever it is being used for, the subjects have to be uh, instilled. Like they have to be tied in place, their head has to be fixed, which means they're not able to move. But, which also means that we're not getting real uh, data or they're not in their natural habitat, which means it kind of ruins the point of the experiment. So, we want to make a wireless, or similar, some, some, similar to that. Well, if you want to make something wireless, you have to reduce a lot of hardware. Reducing hardware means you have to uh, come up with efficient ways to write software, because software and hardware go together. So you have to make sure that you're able to run the software that you have on the hardware. Well, we were thinking of alternative uh, computational paradigms, and well, we came across, or this, which is, 
there's two ways you can write programs on your computer, the CPU or the GPU. The CPU is a very uh, powerful part of your computer. It's as two main processor or four, depending on your computer, but we simply found that it was not the best option because uh, it's, it's, it works well with diverse computations instead of, because the data we're getting from our mic, uh, microscope intensity value, we're doing the same calculations over and over again. It's not the best way to make use of our system, so we were looking into the GPU. And the GPU is better because it can do computations in parallel. What do I mean by parallel? Let's say you want to you want to make 10 sandwiches and you want your CPU to do it. If you give that instruction to the CPU, the CPU makes 10 sandwiches uh, by making one sandwich, two sandwiches, three sandwiches, just by doing the same thing over and over again, which will take it about 50 seconds. But if you use the GPU to make the same uh, sandwich, the GPU will assign eight threads, which are, which is basically a pro uh, the thread, uh, excuse the processors, or a process. And it would make ten or ten. It would sorry, that, that, it would make ten sandwiches in five seconds because it's able to do this in parallel. It would it would lay out ten breads, ten cheese, ten meat, and then ten uh, bread again, and it would make ten sandwiches in this in a much shorter amount of time than a CPU can. Which is why we started. Uh, we wanted to use the GPU. The sandwich analogy is great, but this doesn't really apply to our. Uh, how do we apply it to our uh, project, right? We're getting intensity values. I said I'll come back to this. Uh, the light sensor picks up the intensity values. And what are, we, what are we doing with these intensity values? We're calculating the brightness at each pixel. So for example, let's say we pick a pixel size of, that, that array has 16 numbers in it. And let's say that's our pixel size from 10 to 2. Right. Are you guys able to see that? Okay. So, if we just do a regular addition to sum up the intensity level to get the brightness of that pixel, we'd be doing 10 plus 1 plus 8 minus 1. Each addition would be waiting for the previous calculation, which means that for 2, for to add 0, the last number, or second to last number to add to 2, we have to wait for 10, to, or all the numbers to be added before we do that, which takes time if you think about it. If you have a million numbers, this takes a lot of time to do. Well, if you do this in parallel, what you do is you first divide the, uh, your entire array in half, and then you keep, you would assign however many thread or, or processors, or however many elements you have, you'd assign that many threads to the half of it, and then you'd, so for example, for this data set, you'd have from zero to seven, and then thread zero would execute 10 plus uh, minus two, which is eight, and all of them would cover. Ten plus two would be minus eight, and then there's thread one. It would be one plus two, which is or one plus minus two, or oh, one plus minus three, which is minus two. Eight plus uh, two, ten. So it would keep doing that pattern, and every time you do this in the loop, loop it would be dividing that array in half, or yeah, it would be dividing it in half. So in only four steps, you already have your brightness level for that one pixel, and you don't need to wait for all these calculations to be done just to get one um, brightness value. And that is why uh, we're this. Uh, that's why we're uh, implementing this method. And uh, the speed up. The speed up comes when you have a lot of, like I said, when you have a lot of numbers to deal with. Uh, you can tell the difference, and here's what I mean by the difference. The GPU is, uh, you can see that, or let me explain first. The time, the y-axis is the processing time that it took, and uh, the horizontal line is the elements, the number of elements, and it ranges from 2 to 2 to, to the power of 22. And uh, at, you can see at the beginning the GPU is not the GPU is labeled in uh, orange, and you can see that the time is about constant at 1 to the negative 4, 10 to the negative 4, and this is most of the time is spent on memory allocation. It's not really doing computation. They pretty much take about the same time to do the calculation. It's just that the GPU, you have to transfer memory to the uh, GPU before you're able to do calculations on it, and that's why at the, at the low levels, uh, or at least until 2 to the 19, 
uh, the CPU is better at that because the GPU spends more time doing other things. Now, when you start going to higher numbers, such as 2 to the 21 to the 22, the GPU starts beating the computer because, or the CPU, because uh, it's just faster. It's doing these calculations, it's dividing in half, they have, it's just doing it at a much faster pace than the CPU is. And that's what we also got from our data that we tested on. It's a sample of one gigabyte uh, data was run through, and it took 12 milliseconds to run that data, which means it was run at, running at 93 gigabytes per second, which is, um, which it, it beats our expected rate, which is because the expected rate for our data is 4 gigabytes, 4.8 gigabytes per second. But instead of uh, by using the GPU, we will uh, allocate other processes to the CPU and we're able to efficiently use our system. And um, for future goals, we want to use this program for the two full-time microscopes that is still being built and get real data for, or be able to use it to get real data from uh, to get a real output from the matchup on the microscope. And I want to say thank you to my <laughs> mentor, Sam, that was, the, that was a good picture. <laughs> 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 <laughs>